I esteemed her more than scepters and thrones. Compared with her, I held riches as nothing. I reckon no priceless stone to be her peer, for compared with her, all gold is a pinch of sand, and beside her, silver ranks as mud. I loved her more than health or beauty, preferred her to the light, since her radiance never sleeps. In her company, all good things come to me, at her hands, riches not to be numbered. The word of the Lord. Fill us with your love that we may rejoice. Make us know the shortness of our life that we may gain wisdom of heart. Lord, relent, is your anger forever. Show pity to your servants. In the morning, fill us with your love. We shall exult and rejoice all our days. Give us joy to balance our affliction for the years when we knew misfortune. Show forth your work to your servants. Let your glory shine on their children. Let the favour of the Lord be upon us. Give success to the work of our hands. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The word of God is something alive and active. It cuts like any double-edged sword, but more finely. It can slip through the place where the soul is divided from the spirit or joints from the marrow. It can judge the secret emotions and thoughts. No created thing can hide from him. Everything is uncovered and open to the eyes of the one to whom we must give account of ourselves. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. How happy are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. <coughs> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus was setting out on the journey when a man ran up, knelt before him and put this question to him. Good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You must not kill. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not bring false witness. You must not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he said to him, Master, I have kept all these from my earliest days. Jesus looked steadily at him and loved him, and he said, There is one thing you lack. Go and sell everything you own and give the money to the poor, and you'll have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. But his face fell at these words, and he went away sad, for he was a man of great wealth. Jesus looked round and said to his disciples, how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were astonished by these words, but Jesus insisted. My children, he said to them, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. They were more astonished than ever. In that case, they said to one another, who can be saved? Jesus gazed at them. For men, he said, it is impossible, but not for God, because everything is possible for God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise we had the bishop last Sunday for confirmation at 12 o'clock. And today he's asked us to read out a pastoral letter on this 
synod that Pope Francis seems to insist that every parish in the world, every diocese in the world gets involved in. So this is the bishop speaking. In October 2018, I was privileged to be in Rome for the Synod on Young People. It was the culmination of listening to young people in the church from across the globe, sharing their hopes and fears, joys and sorrows of being members of the church. Their reflections form the working do document for the Synod and a focus for further listening to the young people present during the Synod itself. It was both enriching and exhausting experience. A final document was drawn up reflecting all that we had heard during the days of the Synod and a short while after the Holy Father responded to the young with the encouraging and challenging open letter called Christus Vivit. Today in Rome the Holy Father will invite the whole church to set out together on a new synodal journey. Once again, listening will be the method, discerning will be the aim, and participation will be the path. The Holy Father asks that the theme of our shared journey be communion, participation, and mission. The companion document for the journey Vade Mecum, I don't know what that means, maybe you do, but it's called Vade Mecum, offers us these brief reflections to help us understand these key words for our journey. First one, communion. By his gracious will, God, gather, God gathers us together as diverse peoples of one faith through the covenant he offers his people. Together we are inspired by listening to the word of God through the lifelong tradition of the church and grounded in the census fee day that we share. We all have a role to play in discerning and living out God's call for his people. Second, participation. A call for the involvement of all who belong to the people of God, laity, consecrated and ordained to engage in the exercise of deep and respectful listening to one another. The listening creates the space for us to hear the Holy Spirit together guides our aspirations for the church for the third millennium. Participation is based on the fact that all the faithful are qualified and called to serve one another through the gifts they have each received through the Holy Spirit. Third, mission. The church exists to evangelize. We can never be centered on ourselves. Our mission is to witness to the love of God in the midst of the whole human family. The journey that we are about, we are about to set out on is not an exercise in gathering data and information or a series of meetings and debates. It is rather a prayerful process rooted in a prayerful encounter with Jesus, reading of the scriptures through the liturgical life of the church and an openness to the movement of the Holy Spirit. At the heart of the process is the discernment of the way the church is to be locally and worldwide at this moment in history. Pope Francis makes this point about the synodal path in his book, Let Us Dream, and I quote, what is under discussion at synodal gatherings are not traditional truths of Christian doctrine. The synod is concerned mainly with how the teaching can be lived and applied in the changing context of our times. End of quote. We are invited to do this by first of all listening to each other but also by listening to the faith tradition and to the signs of the times in order to discern what God is saying to us and what his dream is for us. Our response to the call of the Holy Father's journey to journey together along the synodal path begins here in the diocese with the opening liturgy in the cathedral at 4.30 p.m. next Sunday, 17th of October. Throughout the autumn, there will be an opportunity to meet at parish deanery and diocesan level 
and engage in the synodal process of respectful listening to one another, to our faith tradition and to the signs of the times. The fruits of our listening to one another will be collated and forwarded to the Bishop's Conference for the next step along the synodal path. For further details, visit our diocesan website. As we prepare to set out on our journey, Pope Francis offers us this word of encouragement. And he says, Time belongs to the Lord. Trusting in him, we move forward with courage, building unity through discernment to discover and implement God's dream for us and the paths of action ahead. Ralph, Bishop of Hallam. Now, if you know what that means, you're a lot better than I am. <laughs> well, maybe as we go along through the discussions, etc., we'll, it'll come to light what really this is all about. But I think it's, it's sort of the type of church which uh, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, wants. He, he's kind of moving away from this hierarchical church, I think. But the hierarchy will always be there. But he wants more of an involvement of people, like Vatican II did, but we never really got off the ground with that. But maybe this, this push will help us to really, as, it's a, as what synod means is to walk together, or to journey together. That's what it means. And he, he must have emphasized it several times in this particular letter about listening to one another and walking together and sharing our story rather than like being talked down to from above like I'm doing now <laughs> sorry <laughs> I think I think it's it's a good idea to get away from not to kick out the bishops or anything like that but to to move and to feel we are the church rather than up there in the diocese somewhere is the hierarchy or the priests or the religious but you're all part of God's family so as we go through it'll take a couple of years by the way as we go through the process we will have meetings here but they won't just be I won't just be talking shop to you or just giving you the truths of the faith. Basically, I think it's about what those truths really mean in your ordinary, everyday life. And everyone has a story to tell. And maybe we need to listen more to those stories as we move along together. But I still don't understand what it means. Maybe you do. Who was the 
to those who ask him. We place our needs before him today. Let us pray that a spirit of gratitude may characterize everything we do and are. May we, above all, respect God's gift of life, especially when it's most at risk. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That the Spirit of God deepen our awareness of the nobility and duty of caring for creation through small daily acts. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for prisoners and their families and all who work in the prison service. May the service which the church gives them show more clearly the compassion of Christ, which he showed towards marginalized people mentioned in the gospel. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for the sick. May the pain and distress of others serve to nurture in us deeper qualities of empathy, understanding, and compassion. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for the dead, especially George Mullins, Bertram Andrews, Brian Matthews, Agnes Waite, and Joan Hayes, who died recently and those whose anniversaries occur around this time. May eternal life be theirs. Lord, hear us. Let us pray to Mary, our sweetness and our hope. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And let us pause and pray for needs of our own. Lord, hear us. God, our Father, listen to our heartfelt prayers, those indeed. And grant us the grace we need to live in accordance with your will on earth, and so merit the place reserved for us in heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself. Share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Vincent, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, which your servant Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, 
all the clergy and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The body of Christ. Amen. 